uh, he's one of those guys already in that deference category. And you mentioned it, you saw it by playing time against the Jets. Um, but I got to tell you, the bigger issue to me is when he was out yesterday, they, they don't know what to do with backup safety. I'm, I'm, they're giving first team reps to Josiah Scott, who was just a cornerback two weeks ago. Right. Remember, uh, Reed Blankenship, an undrafted free agent, they gave 50 grand to uh, to come and sign, get first team reps. He's John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. You got JM and JM, the Mac guys here on Birds 365. Uh, Paul Domwich is going to join us in about 15 minutes from now. Um, John, I need your uh, experience to uh, give the Birds fans a little bit of a taste because uh, they're going to get pictures and some video from the uh, team practices that the Eagles are going to go through, joint practices with the Browns the next couple of days. You were there last year for the Eagles team practices, first with the Patriots, uh, here in Philadelphia, and then up the turnpike against the Jets. Uh, this past year, vary from practice to practice, vary from team to team. It's called a joint practice for a very specific reason. Both teams get to dictate some terms on how they use the time that they have when they're together on the field. What are the joint practices? Not knowing what the Browns are actually looking to do, but uh, just uh, judging the Eagles and, and how they handled their business last year. What are these joint practices going to look like <clears throat> from a Philadelphia standpoint? Uh, yeah, it is kind of a, a, a joint negotiation. They always are. So basically you, you get together and you say, what do you want to work on? Uh, what, a, what do we want, want to work on and sort of mesh that together and try to fit both into the, uh, the session. So if the Browns want, think they need work on third downs, for instance, and, and the Eagles um, say we want to work on red zone, whatever, could be red zone offense, red zone defense, you kind of cobble it out, make sure there's significant periods of both. And then they typically end with just team drills. Um, usually hurry up, you know, two minute situations uh, where you get this really, really competitive in, environment. Uh, but it's always dependent on the coaches and, um, you know, what they want to get accomplished and where they think they are with their particular teams. I remember, you know, Bill Belichick is coming here for um, um, a number of times now. Um, and everybody would worry, like, Bill's going to, you know, railroad uh, Chip Kelly or Nick Sirianni or whoever. Um, but he doesn't. I mean, it's it, it truly is, um, you know, both teams trying to get better. And they like it because the film isn't out there other than the team you're playing. You know, the Eagles were even, because the Eagles are absurd with this stuff. I kind of talked about this yesterday on the show. You know, they were even worried about the Jets a little bit because they played them later in the season. And it was like, by that point, everything's changed. They, In fact, the Eagles are a perfect example. <clears throat> they were a completely different team by Very that true. point of the season. Uh, it, it just doesn't. But there's so much concern of letting things out. And I laughed about that yesterday. I mean. You know, as as things have gotten simpler and simpler around the NFL, they get seem to get more, you know, clandestine, uh, which is bizarre to me. But that's a little aside. But they work things out. Now, what you were able to do with your phone last year, a.k.a. video camera, everybody on the planet has a video camera now right there in yeah. their head yeah. that is their phone. And fans uh, can take the video, but we can't. Uh, right, uh, which I think is just stone cold ridiculous. How much of it does leak out that uh, it'll be Cleveland fans? So you're going to have to find Cleveland Cleveland uh, social media outlets where you can be able to check out some video. Uh, they will allow fans in in Bray, yeah. Ohio. There, so how much are we going to actually be able to uh, learn from the film of the Eagles versus the Browns? Um. Not, not much. Not you know, it, it's funny that, and completely, this wasn't the topic, but I was talking to Shane Steichen off to the side, uh, 
and and we were talking about the the open practice of the Lincoln Financial Field, and one of the other reporters mentioned something about you know fans being able to 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 film it, and and Shane couldn't have cared less. I mean, he he he, he couldn't have cared less. Like worrying about. I think I think the question was about like Dallas scouts or giant scouts coming down the turnpike to look at the practice. And it's like, you know, if they're going to do that, I that boy that stuff gets over. I think Bill Belichick is in people's heads so much uh because of his success and obviously you, you still hear it today. We hear it with Eagles. Hollis Thomas who's been on the show. He can't get over it, man. He can't get over it. The Patriots cheated. So many of the Eagles back then, the Patriots cheated. If 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 you can cheat and 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 turn that into something tangible in the 40 seconds between plays, Godspeed, man. Godspeed. You're better than me. You you I tip my cap to you. I I I don't care about that stuff. I think most coaches don't care about that stuff which is weird because they do care about, oh, you know, we might be putting a play installed that an opposition team that we has seen a hundred times, but maybe they haven't run it recently and they don't want it reported because it might be a big moment, big spot in that game. They're more concerned with stuff like that than overreaching videos or more stuff like that. Or, or, you know, fan videos. All right, Johnny Mac, there is one other position. We talked about the running backs earlier, and if uh, I had my own little camera to be able to shoot and watch what happened in practice and put some evaluation into it, a position that I believe the Eagles are far from settled with going into their first game of the regular season against the Lions, and we've talked about it, shoot, since last season ended, that's safety. Um you and I are both Epps guys, and we were early on during the offseason that Ooh. the Eagles played him last year. And if you didn't read into it, that the Eagles may have liked Marcus Epps more than some of the Eagle fans like Marcus Epps, that he was, in their eyes, their best safety. They certainly handled their business in bringing in other safeties, two guys, veterans, one-year deal, basically the same exact deal uh, they weren't going to upgrade there. They thought that Epps was their best safety, and that's the way it's looked so far in the, the practices that you're at every single day. He turned up injured. The other. Before we talk about yeah. the, the, the entire spot, uh, Epps' injury left the field, came back, but didn't practice again. Um, did you get any word as to uh, what it was or how significant it was? Uh, back injury. Um, uh, and nothing as far as how significant just that he's out there watching. So again, not too concerned if it were really serious, especially a back injury, they're not going to let him on the field near the field where somebody might run into him or something of that nature. So uh, he's one of those guys already in that deference category. And you mentioned it, you saw it by playing time against the jets. Um, But I got to tell you, the bigger issue to me is, when he was out yesterday, they, they don't know what to do with backup safety. I'm, I'm, they're giving first team reps to Josiah Scott, who was just a cornerback two weeks ago. Right. I remember, uh, Reed Blankenship, an undrafted free agent, they gave fifty grand to, uh, to come and sign, get first team reps. Finally, at the end of practice, they went back to Kayvon Wallace, who got benched essentially from the first team for. Josiah Scott, who played cornerback two weeks ago and an undrafted kid uh, who had been playing ahead of him. And, oh, by the way, Jaquaski Tart hasn't taken a first-team rep all summer. Now, he missed three days, three practices, four if you count the really the preseason game. Um, you, you, you know, they have an issue at, at safety. Um, if if Marcus Epps can't play, if Anthony Harris can't play, then what do you do? And that's one of the reasons uh, they they traded for the kid from Seattle, uh, U- Ugo Amadi. Um, and thank you know, thank God for our buddy Rob Amadi, because uh, then I can remember Ugo <laughs> Amadi. Um, but 
Yeah, they have an issue. And and even Ugo, Ugo's a, a, a safety, you know, by training, by trade, so to speak, coming out of college at Oregon. But he's played mostly nickelback in Seattle, and he's more of a special teams guy, to be honest. So, boy, they got an issue there, Jody. And that's another position where you might say, come waiver wire time, maybe a trade. Maybe we start talking about Jalen Rager for Chuck Clark again. Jalen Rager and in in, in, in some kind of – you you probably have to add something to it, obviously. Um but they, they could use some help at safety, to say the least. Um, inside the Eagles.com is a website I go to every once in a while. Jeff Knox, leading writer, is a pretty good Eagle beat guy. Um, he had Andre Sachere ranked as his number three safety on the Eagles as of right now, with uh, Epps being one and uh, last year's starter being two. He had him ahead of Jaquaski Tart, which I had no issues with whatsoever. Is Sachere, uh, you, you, I think you've told us that it's more of a Josiah Scott thing who just became a safety within the last couple of weeks. He's playing quarterback, and now he's not only jumped to safety, he's moved up the safety depth chart with the Eagles. Uh, who would you rank one atop the other right now, Scott or Sachere at safety for the Bears? Well, uh, right now you have to uh, have Scott ahead because he got first-team reps, and Sachere didn't. Um, and, and he was one I mentioned. There were three guys who got first-team reps. Andre was not one of them. Now, Andre got all the second-team reps, so as they continued to rotate, I think it's one of those situations where Andre and and has a lot of value, and so does Josiah, because they do three different things. They play safety, they play slot, and they play special teams. Special teams. Um, so they're both in that same sort of category. I mentioned it, I think, on the show last week. Um, it seems like the Eagles are are trying to play up their versatility to to get them on the 53. I think they're both going to be on the 53, barring, you know, maybe if you trade for a Chuck Clark, maybe then you have to make a difficult decision um, and pick one or the other. But unless something changes, um, I think they're both going to be here. And then it, it, it would be interesting if you had to play him, uh, what happens. I think the two most interesting names, though, are Kayvon Wallace and Joukowsky Tart. Um, as you mentioned, Tart has not gotten one first-team rep. Um, Wallace, if, if you remember way back at the beginning of camp, Anthony Harris was, was, was dealing with COVID. And Kayvon Wallace, the aftermath of COVID, do we have our Chikwaski Tart fan in there? Is that yes. what you're smiling I got, at? I, I got to give him credit because um, he's he's sticking to it. Uh, we've mentioned this a couple times here on the God, show. God uh, bless. We, and we appreciate all our guys who stream. And, yeah, I keep an eye on it. We don't reference it much because I talk too much. John talks too much. We don't have time to go to the, <laughs> to the stream. Yeah. Um, but Dominique Dabney. I am 99% sure was the individual who said when they signed Jaquaski Tart, Eagles just added their best safety. So we're talking about the depth chart at safety. Uh, Dominique had uh, Tart at the top of the list. So as you and I sit here and kind of question aloud and wonder aloud how good the Eagles depth is at the safety position, Dominique checked in and said, Tart is just getting up to speed I think the media is overstating our safety problem. Uh, sorry, Dominique, we'll stand by our stance of, yeah, the Eagles have a safety issue. And I will certainly stand by my stance that uh, Mr. Tart is not the answer. And he sure as hell is not the Eagles' best safety, as you previously stated here on the screen. Yeah. Well, if he does, I'll give you all the props in the world. I'll come on every day for a week and go, and we need to see what Dominique uh, Dabney has to say because he knows the Eagles better than Jody McDonald. Uh, I, I'm not sweating that one much. Tart was well. One we the one we can already put the dirt on as they you know uh, so to speak to say that he's the best safety. I mean Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris have taken every single first team rep when healthy, so that tells you what the Eagles think their best safeties are. It's going to be Marcus Epps. It's going to be Anthony Harris, unless they bring in 
at Chuck Clark and maybe something changes from that perspective if they bring in somebody uh, from outside the organization. Now, if you want to, if you want to spin it like, okay, the Eagles know what he is. He's a veteran player. He's got to learn a new system, blah, blah, blah. And they want to look at the Josiah Scott's of the world and the Andre Sachery's and the Reed Blankenship's and evaluate the younger players and then default and say, guess what? These guys can't do it. Default back to Jaquaski Tart as a backup player. I'll leave the door slightly ajar for that. Um, but no. Can we stop with that? This is the Eagles' best safety. I mean, come on. I mean, and and if you're gonna go down that route, if you're gonna double 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 down on that route, I want the stinking apology. When Marcus Epps and Anthony Harris are out there week one. Yeah, don't don't hold your breath on that one. Don't think it's coming. But I did have to note it today just because, again, and yeah, it's a shot at you and I because he had to go the media, which if you're watching Bird Street 65, I think we know who the media entailed. That would be Mac and Mac. Uh, the media. Overstating the Speaking of, problem. part no, of the media. The overstatement. Jaquaski yeah. Tart is the Eagles' best safety. If there's an overstatement to be looked at here, yeah. it's the uh, there is a vast media conspiracy to downplay Jaquaski Tart. Paul Domowitz is part of it too. He's going to yeah, join Domo. us next. Shame on Domo. Yeah. Uh, he is in the green room. He is joining us next. We still got forty solid minutes coming your way of this edition of Birds Three Sixty Five. <laughs> 